Morning friends. I was uh, on my way home from the hospital now. I moved into Columbia Drive to my home, small uh, three bedroom home. I don't have many pictures when I was young, but this is one of the few pictures I have when I was, you know, younger. <laughs> so this is all I have. But I moved in and, and these were the early years of my life, these formative years, they call them. Because in these early years, I think even the biblical sources today, science would say, is the early years where the character and the personality are influenced by the surroundings. If you look in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Hannah gave suck unto Samuel until he was weaned. So there's your Bible definition of what weaning means. To wean a child means he's no longer breastfed. So when Hannah finished breastfeeding Samuel, and I don't know what age that was, three, four, five, I don't know. The Bible doesn't specify the age of Samuel. But she took him up to the temple. Last two verses, she's rejoicing because God gave her a son. And now she's giving him back to God for service. <laughs> and Samuel moved into the temple there and resided with Eli. And as the years passed by, he, he assumed more and more responsibilities until Samuel was walking as a judge, priest, and prophet. Now, a lot of that was a, a blessing coming from his early childhood, breastfed at his mother's side, early childhood influences. So when Jesus talks about these little children, he says in Matthew 18, verse 3, unless you become as a little child, you'll know why I see the kingdom of heaven. So children, they have something that, 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 that adults, evidently adults don't have. They have a childlike nature. And Jesus is telling the adults, you need to be like these little children. And then he, he, he specifies more in verse 4. He says, unless you humble yourself as a little child. Come on, friends, children are humble. You know, when you hear a child pray, you don't hear any uh, hypocritical, pharisaical, long, bellicose prayers. You hear just simple, down-to-earth language. You know, uh, I was doing a meeting one time. It was a, a convention somewhere. And before, you know, it was practice before you start, you know, either he prays for himself or somebody else prays. And I asked a little child there, I said, would you be willing to come up and pray for me? And they said, yes. <laughs> and so he came up, he knelt down, said something like, you know, dear Jesus, help Brother Lou. <laughs> and that was all I needed because that is a simple, sincere prayer right from the heart of a child. A child doesn't know how to be a hypocrite. It takes time to learn these things. And Jesus said, we've got to digress to be children again. You know, and now it's true. When we get older, there are some things from our childhood we ought to leave behind. And so as I moved into my home, it was an environment, a formative environment, whereby my mom and dad were supposed to teach me important lessons. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, one of the things you don't want to put away is a childlike simplicity, a, a humbleness, a sincerity. You want to hold on to those things. But, you know, the, uh, the tantrums and some of those things we exhibit as children, we want to let those things go. But there is a division there when I became a man. So from child to man. In uh, 1 Samuel, it says when Samuel was young, and then when she weaned him, took him up to the temple. There's a, a division there between sometime in the early childhood and sometime later. But the early childhood is, I think everybody agrees, this is when a lot of the character is formed. The influences shape us in our early childhood that really have a lasting impact and influence. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. And then, of course, it says when he's old, when he's older. Again, the two divisions, child and older. When he is old, he won't depart from it. So the Bible stresses when the children are young, this is the time to make the impression on their minds. And the father, as his role in, as the high priest in the home, is supposed to help the child to understand something about God the Father by his fatherly care of the children. 
So the father is, is helping the child because the child is too young. You know, at three months old, six months old, the child is too young to understand the concept of God in heaven and a sanctuary and angels, you know, at three months old. But the child knows, you know, when it has its needs. It knows when it's hungry, mom feed me. It knows when it needs its diaper changed, dad change me. And so the mom and the father, as they care for the child, the child can't care for itself. The child is helpless at that age. As they extend the care the child needs, the child begins to see, I can lean hard on mom and dad. I can find help when I need it from them. And of course, the mom and dad get a lesson too. As the child is helpless and they minister to the needs of the child, they see how helpless they themselves are. They, the earthly father, sees his child is helpless without him. And then the father turns and sees that he is helpless without his heavenly father. So the mom and the dad, they're teaching the child, but dear friends, they're learning from the child too. You know, Enoch, when he had the son, he got an experience he did not have before he had the child. He ended up walking with God and God took him, right? So the formative years, so when I got into my home, my mom and dad, it'd be hard to share what they never got. They weren't raised in Christian homes. We, we really never had any type of religious environment. There was no prayer. The Bible wasn't read. There was no hour of worship. We didn't have that. And as far as I know, I mean, most people don't. Now, some do, and that's a great blessing. It's a great blessing, but many don't. And when the child is in that place where he is ready to receive impressions, where he is ready like a sponge to be uh, trained to be able to think and to act for God and understand the relationship, that soon, when, it, when he's still in his parental home, he can move that relationship from his earthly father to his heavenly father, and he learned that from the earthly father. But uh, a lot of people didn't have that. I didn't. What I did have is I got a little rocking horse, this little spring-actuated rocking horse. It rocks back and forth. I had a rocky horse. And uh, I got a little cowboy set, <laughs> little two six shooters and a cowboy outfit and a cowboy hat. And I would just sit for hours back and forth on that little rocky horse. And my mom would, I remember, I, I don't remember a lot from those first three, four, five years, but I remember my mom would give me a bath, clean me up, then dress me up in that cowboy outfit. And I'd go sit on my rocky horse and rock back and forth. And of course, by age four and five, I'm walking around. There was a tree out in the backyard. And I wasn't much of a tree climber at that age, but I remember sitting on this one limb and feeling safe and kind of cozy. It was like a secret place, a hiding place. And I remember some good times back then. Now my father, you know, it, it, it seems from my own experience, as we struggle with some of these bad habits, if we don't get a victory over them early in life, as we get older, things grow worse. And my dad, in those early years of mine, you know, he was drinking, but it wasn't like it was, you know, a few years later. It was, it was not a violent environment in the home at that time. My mom was, uh, was faithful to all that she knew. And it was, uh, I, I just th I thank the Lord for the mother and the father that I did have. And I thank the Lord that if you did not have the ideal mother and father, if your childhood experience was not one that would prepare you to meet the challenges of, of, of later in life, well, don't you worry, friends. God's got a plan. If you didn't get it when you're young, He can help you get it when you're older. And if you came out of a home that was broken, that there was a lot of distress in the home, the mom, mother and the father, maybe there wasn't even a parent in the home. It was a broken down home. God can still build you up, fix you up, and save you up, and lift you up. He can. John 12, 32, if I be lifted up, I can draw. He will. I will draw all men unto me. So those were the early years. And I can't really say a lot about them because I don't remember a lot. I remember some, some happy moments. I remember there was, you know, there were from time to time, there were some, uh, there were some uh, difficult times there in the home. But 
I know now that God was with me every step of the way. He was helping me. We had a, you know, I believe in guardian angels because the Bible teaches that. If you do not have earthly support, dear friends, you will have heavenly support. If you don't have an earthly father that is able to take care of your needs, to minister to the longings in your soul, my dear friends, you have a heavenly father and he'll step in and help you. But, you know, the problem is when we're young, we don't really have a cognizant awareness of our heavenly father. All we see as a two-year-old is our earthly father. But God, has, God says where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. He has a plan to come in and restore and heal and bring to pass a family relationship with him that perhaps you may, you may never had with your earthly father. So those are kind of the early years. Uh, born, rocky horse, quiet time out, in the, out, in the, out, in the, out there in the backyard on the tree. And the days were approaching where I'd enter into elementary school, five, six years old. And that was really, that marked a big change in my life, leaving the home environment and going into the public school, the elementary school. My dear friends, uh, regardless of the past, let's look toward the future. Looking unto 12.2 of Hebrews, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He will help us to grow in grace. He will help us to grow up as calves in the stall, Malachi 4, verse 2. So may God bless you and keep you.